Hey everyone, welcome back to Devrai Technologies. In this video, we'll configure single sign on, which is also called as SSO in Microsoft Teams bot for single tenant bots. So let's get started. If you have watched my previous videos where we had configured authentication for the web chat channel, in that we have configured for all the three bot types that is single tenant, multi tenant, and user assigned managed identity bots. Now we'll do the same thing for Microsoft Teams bot. We'll start with single tenant bots. If you have watched my previous video, you would remember that this is the resources that we created. We created three Azure bot resources, single tenant, multi tenant and user signed managed identity. I'll be making use of same Azure bot resources. If you want to learn how I created them, please go and watch my previous three videos where we talked about creating these resources. I'll pick up the single tenant Azure bot resource. First of all, I'll configure the Microsoft Teams channel. I'll go to channels and configure Microsoft Teams. Perfect. This is the documentation. So enable SSO for your bot and message extension app. So let's go here. Okay. So these are the steps that we need to follow. So if you remember in our web chat authentication, we configured and created a separate app registration for the authentication. In this case, we are going to configure in the same app registration that of Azure bot service. Okay. So let's see what are the options here. Use Azure bot resource and configure entry ID app. Configure entry ID app for SSO. I think we are going to follow this step. That will be much better. Okay, so first of all, we'll go to configuration and click on manage and get the client ID. Okay, let's follow these steps. Manage. Get the client ID. Go to API permissions. No, expose an API, application ID, URI. Let's go back to the documentation. So this is the format that it has to take. The application ID, URI is prefilled with the format. Yes, that's correct. So standalone bot. If you're building a standalone bot, enter the application ID URI as bot ID dash and the bot ID. Okay. Okay. So in our case, it is standalone bot and it doesn't have multiple capabilities such as building an application as well as bot or message extension. So this is a standalone bot. So in this case, I'll need to enter bot ID dash before my client ID. Like this. Let me show you. This is how you need to enter bot ID dash and your client ID. Save it. What's the next step?
then we need to add scopes access as user let's add a scope it will be admins and users i'll better open the code sample so that i can copy paste all these requirements yeah this is the one okay so i'll just copy paste all these details I'm just giving the user consent and admin consent display name and description. Let's add it. That's done. So once that is done, then we need to configure the client applications. And here, there are a list of client applications which you need to configure. For example, if your users are accessing the Teams application from their mobile device as well as desktop application, then you need to configure this client ID as well as if they are using it from the web application, then these two. So mostly we'll be configuring these two client applications where your users will be accessing this bot application. So I'll enter the client application, choose the scope. Next, I'll choose for the web application. These are the predefined application, client application for the web as well as desktop and mobile. Okay. Once this is done, we will see these two similar implementation. Next, we need to make sure the access token accepted version is 2 by going to manifest usually it will be two so here it's not there let's make that two and save okay then it is asking us to create a client secret that's fine we'll create it later and configure the redirect url Okay, so this is the redirect URI that you need to mention in authentication as a web platform. This we already did, but not in this app registration, but a different app registration. So we'll be entering this redirect URI. Okay, here I got the URI link. Let me just copy this. And I need to check box these two. Why I check those two? Because it is mentioned here. You might be confused that why I'm following both the documentation. It's just a choice because uh, this might be more accurate because this is part of the GitHub repository compared to be on the Microsoft Learn documentation. Okay, so all good. Now we are ready to configure the OAuth connection. Okay, all seems to be same except that token exchange URL will contain the application ID URL. So that's the only change that we'll be having. All right, so let me open the bot in a new tab configuration remember i can also configure multiple OAuth settings for different channels for example this i have configured for web chat i can also configure for teams here teams sso i'll be choosing azure active directory v2 
my client id is here let's enter the client secret let me delete one of them there we have the client secret next is token exchange url this is a url you need to mention there it's a single tenant bot so i'll need to provide the tenant id as well then scopes similar scopes that we have email open id profile and user dot read so i'll just go to api permission okay i don't have scopes here so i need to provide the scopes here first email open id profile and user dot read okay I'll not grant admin consent. Well, that's an optional because uh, these permissions do not do not require admin consent. User, once they log in for the first time, they can consent themselves. There are some Active Directory where admin consent is required on all the permissions and scopes. So make sure if your organization supports that, then admin needs to provide consent okay let's provide that email open id profile user dot read and save it once i have saved the connection i'll open it again and test the connection exit and there we have the token. Let's go to jwt.io and verify the information my token has. Here is the details. I can see my display name, object ID, scopes, email ID, and that's all. That's the details that I need here. Okay, so that is all here configuring our team's SSO. Now it's time for us to get the sample up and running. So I'll be picking up what conversation SSO quick start sample. This is the one. And I'll be using C sharp.net code. And this is a sample that I'll be picking it up. Okay. First of all, I'll go to the main repository, get the GitHub URL, let's clone it. Okay, I'll clone it to my team's samples and let's clone it. Perfect. I'll close this Visual Studio window. I'll go to the team samples location. Open samples. 
then bot conversation sso quick start sesha okay so i have the c sharp sample i'll copy it and paste it here then let's open this Before continuing ahead, I'll just change the .NET version. Currently it is .NET 6, I'll change that to .NET 8. Perfect. Let's see if my dependencies are getting resolved. If not, I'll just make sure that uh, I update all the packages. Okay. I'll close it and reopen it again. Now my dependencies are resolved. First of all, let's go to app settings.json. Here we need app ID, secret, connection name, app type, and tenant ID. Okay. Before entering these values, I'll be guiding you through the sample code. So let's go to Teams bot. This is the method that you need to override for Teams bot, the similar method we have seen for web chat authentication, but this is method for the Teams authentication. So make sure you override this, else you'll not get event when user signed in into your application or bot. You'll not get the event unless you have this method overridden. So that's the first step that you need to change. If you're implementing this in your existing bot, make sure you add this particular method. Next, going to the main dialog. This is a similar code that we have seen in our web chat authentication. So whenever you need any authentication at any of the steps, so you can easily call this dialog OAuth prompt. And on the next subsequent step in the dialog, you can retrieve the token. And with that token, you can call any of your graph APIs. So in this case, it is getting the user profile and it is getting the job title of that particular user. Okay. And yeah, I think that is all here. It also displays the token in the chat body. Next, we have logout dialog. If at all in between the conversation, you type logout, then it's a interrupt. The, it will come to your logout dialog and it will check if user has typed logout, then it will sign out the user and it will cancel all the dialogues okay so that's another thing now coming to adapter with error handler for teams authentication this is the middleware you need to add in your adapter with error handler if at all you are implementing this in your existing bot make sure you add this i think that is all here Let's go to simple graph client. This authenticates with the graph API. Okay, uh, one thing 
I do not want to upgrade my graph client library. The reason being the version 5.x has a different implementation, but all the Microsoft uh, samples supports version 4.x. So I'll just uh, degrade this one to version 4.x. I'll choose the latest 4.x version. Now my these errors will be resolved. Okay. Even I guess I need to downgrade the graph core. Let me quickly check what was the version here in the samples 2014 let's see if this got resolved I believe this project is working. Okay, so now let's enter these values. Okay, I forgot my client secret. Let me just remove this, add a new one. Save it here. And also, I'll add it here. Perfect. Let's add the client ID. Single tenant. For single tenant bot type, you need to provide your tenant ID. Next connection name that's Teams SSO. Okay, so seems fine. Now, next we need manifest because that also plays an important role. in SSO. So here's the package, app package. So let me first copy this, put it here. Open manifest. Here I need to replace this with my app ID. I'll copy it from my app settings.json. There are multiple places where this exists, so I'll just update that. Perfect. In Teams SSO, these two are very important. Make sure you add them. The resource, this is the application ID URL. And even the valid domains is also valid. Make sure you add token.botframework.com. 
if you are developing locally, you need to add your ngrock URI here. If you are deploying, then you need to add your app service URL. Basically, the domain name here, app service domain name. Okay. So all good. I'll just add the valid domains. So this is my domain name. So let me add that star dot ngrock free dot app. Perfect. Now I'm ready to zip them and test it. Copy the location. Go to Teams. I'll just rerun my application just to make sure it is working fine. One thing I need to enter this URI in my bot service configuration slash API slash messages. Go to apps, manage your app, upload, custom. And add. Let me open ngrog just to verify if I'm getting some requests. It's bad gateway. Let's say hi. Okay, it's bad gateway. Bad gateway means something wrong with my project. Let me clean this up, rerun it. Okay, got it. It's running on different port number. That's the reason. So it's running on 5130. Let me just verify this. Yes. So that's the port number it is running on. So I need to make sure that my ng rock runs on the same port number. I'll right click, edit, 5130, save, okay, let's uninstall this bot. and add it again. I'm uninstalling because I want to show it from the start. Well, if I say hi, then what will work for me? I just want to show you what happens when it loads for the first time. There it is, you see, 200 OK. Okay, so what happens when it loads for the first time? Let's see, what's the code written? On members added. Welcome to authentication bot. So I should get that message, but it's not coming. That's fine. Okay, 
so it automatically logs me in and there you see all the details perfect right so it works automatically i did not click on sign in so that's the good part on this but what happens uh, in multi tenant bots usually you'll get a sign in option here okay so if at all you are not logged in automatically so what happens you'll see a message appearing on top of your chat window so somewhere here type about the type your message so where you type your message right just about that you'll see a sign in option you click on that it will pop up a dialog window it will ask you to log in it will also ask you to give consent as a user if you are an admin then it will ask you to give consent on behalf of your whole organization that's an optional to choose if you just giving consent as a user just give permission and continue so once that is done then only you see this message but somehow for me it automatically got logged in so that's the power of sso if you're not got logged in automatically then you will see that pop up window coming up okay now i'll want to show you something extra on this so one thing that i would like to show you get the manifest from here and upload in a separate tenant let's see what happens in this case does it allow me to upload my manifest in a separate tenant or not let's check this out because my bot is a single tenant this test i need to make sure that only my organization can access the bot and no other organization can access it let's see if this is going to work i'll upload that Okay, and let's see what happens. Okay, bot is working, but let's see whether it can continue or not. I'll say hi. Well, it is going to show me error when I'm logging in for the first time. i believe that would be the case i can still interact with the bot but i'll not be able to logging into the bot let's see what happens okay usually at this point of time it should pop up something here okay login was not successful please try again okay so that pop up is not coming but usually you'll see the pop up message here to sign in and give permission but that's not coming so it seems i'm not able to log in to my bot from a different tenant so that's fine it's successful if at all you see a pop up here just try logging in to your account and see uh, the message you'll get most probably the message will be the user account is not found in the requested tenant so that's the message that you usually get when we are trying to log in to a different tenant so that's the message we get if we don't have permission so we get that message okay so that's all here thanks everyone see you in the next video